and and welcome and welcome and Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshana BeMitzvata VeTzivanu LaAsok BeDivrei Torah. Amen. And thank you. And the parsha, in fact, uh, that we are going to study, and next week's parsha are two of the most arcane parshiot in the entire Torah, and they deal with something called tsara'at. This is a, a an affliction that is translated as leprosy. It is not clinical leprosy. Uh, you know, maybe we'll just call it tsara'at and leave it at that. This is clearly a skin affliction. Leprosy is far more pervasive and and awful uh, th than this particular thing. This is not good, but it doesn't talk about limbs falling off and losing your toes and things like that. It is not that kind of disease, not the one in the Torah. Uh, and it's it just it seems to be more like psoriasis than anything else. But it's definitely the sort of superficial on your skin kind of thing. So it does include uh, your hair falling out. That does happen. Uh, although in this case, we're talking about the hair color on your skin changing color. That uh, if it develops a white color, then it's possible that it is tsarat. And here we are talking about a spiritual uncleanliness, a very high level of spiritual impurity. And as Rashi, I believe, says at the beginning of this parsha, uh, the because the Torah went in at the end of last parsha of Shmini, went into the discussion of purity and impurity of animals and contact with them. It would start with animals, and now it's dealing with human beings. And this week's parsha essentially deals with uh, the diagnosis of it, you know, the description of the diagnosis of it. And next week's parsha deals with the process by which the person, the mitzora, the person who has contracted this disease, is able to re-enter the camp, the process by which they are able to regain entrance into the camp. So again, it goes into really, uh, as I said, very arcane issues. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. And we are into this parsha. So you can see this is Shishi. Normally, this parsha, Tazria and Metzora, in a regular year, are combined over the Shabbat. So that would make it, if they were combined, this would be the beginning of the third Aliyah. But when it's just by itself, which it is this particular year, this is already the sixth Aliyah. So we are moving in, since there's seven Aliyot, they are, we've really moved into this, uh, well, into this particular Parsha. And I would refer you to uh, earlier sessions that you can find on the, on the YouTube page of this if you're interested. So, going on. The ish ki maret rosho, if a man loses the hair on his head, ke reachu, he is considered simply bald, tahorhu, he is in fact pure. This is not a case of leprosy. So here we go, ke reachu tahorhu, tahor mi tumat nitakin. So there is a, a disease that the Torah has described as a netek. I think that's translated as a fret, which does involve the hair and the discoloration of the hair. And he's saying, Rashi is saying, this is not one of those various types of netakin, of netek. She'eino nadun v'simane rosh v'zakan. This is not diagnosed with those indications of the head or the beard, Shehem Makom Sa'ar, which are in fact the location where hair is found, Ela Basimane Nig A or, but this would be this okay. Um they they are not judged. Let's make sure 
Okay, this is not going to be judged by this this particular area, but by the indications of nig or where nig nigaim are plagues, literally. In, a, in other words, the plague of leprosy. So the the indications of skin, basar, right? The flesh, basar lavan, right? So this would be another way in which it is. This is if the hair turns white, umichia ufishion. So a michye, I believe, is some kind of uh, rawness to the skin. Pishion sounds like it would be some kind of eruption. Those are indications of leprosy. The, the, the removal of his hair is not considered leprosy. So Rashi's telling us that the indications of leprosy are excluded from this particular diagnosis. I mean, if he saw any of these things, if the priest, and just to, rev to review that, that in order to get diagnosed, the diagnosis is done by a Kohen, by a priest. It is not done by anyone else. But this is totally part of what makes this a spiritual disease. So, now, so here we go. Now, if there is in this bald spot or ba Sorry, I think I left out a sentence. Here we go. Sorry, 41, right? The im mipa'at panav. And if from the front of his, literally it means his face, but it means the front of his head, yimaret rosho. Again, we're talking about his, the hair from his head gets, falls out. Gibeahu. So there's a separate word. I don't think there's a word in English that I know of to directly translate this word, gibeach. Gibeach means front head baldness. So we only have the word bald in Hebrew, but we don't have. So we've got kereach, which would be all the hair of a person's head or that process. Gibeach is if the front of his head, is, he's losing hair on the front of his head, who, as he's considered a gibeach, tahor who, and once again, he's considered to be a, a, a in, in a state of purity. So here, im mepa'at panav, right? Mi shipua kod kod. So shipua would be a slanting error of the of, of the skull, klape panav, towards his face. Karui gabachat. This area, if this, if the hair falls out of this area, he's it's called your gabachat. For, or rather that area of your head where the hair is. For af hatsta'in, and he says, in fact, this also would include the uh, the sides of the head. Shemikan umikan, which are one side and the other, bichlal, are included in this. Umishipua kod kod, flape achorav, karui karachat. So he's defining for us these words of gabachat and karachat, and he's saying, and from the slant of the head, right, of the skull, klape acharav, towards the, the, his back, right, towards the, the nape of the neck, if that area is has the, uh, well, or even, let's forget about removal, okay, I think he is simply saying that that part of the head is called the karachat. Right, and the part of the head that slopes towards the front of the head and the sides is called the gabachat. And so, if you're a kereach, it means you've lost the hair on that part of your head. And if you're a gibeach, you've lost the hair on that part of your head. So Rashi simply saying that that's that these words gabachat and karachat actually have to do with the area of the head we're trying to describe. Okay. But, but so now we go on. Right? So it's important that he's just to find those terms. He says, and if there is in the front of the in the area of the of the skull, which is to the hair that is going towards the back of the head, right? Or bagabachat, or towards the front of the head, nega lavan, a white affliction. Adom dom, 
pinkish, right? Reddish. Sarat porachati. That would be a malignant sarat. The karachto in his karachat, in other words, in that area of the head, or the gabachto, or in that area towards the front of the head. So it could be that he is bald, but there is those signs in the skin. But if I'm understanding Rashi correctly, it could also have to do with the hair, the color of the hair. So it's possible to get leprosy there, but having the hair just simply fall out is not considered a sign of tumah. It's not a sign of impurity. However, we have the Torah has justified those signs of purity that it can, can occur in that part of the head. Okay. Nega lavan, a white affliction. Adam Dam, and I said that sort of reddish. Uh, so now I have a word that I can't make out. I because I this is not this, it's the way it's spelt is petoch, but let's see. Let's see something. Whether he is saying. Okay. I'm trying to see if this is in his in this. Okay, um, I will have to look that up, right? Minayin sha'ar marot. So let me keep going um, because I'm trying to see if there is any a word. I don't recognize this word, I must tell you. So unless it's a misspelling or something. Minayin sha'ar marot. And he says, how about the other marot is referring to to the indications of leprosy. In other words, what if there are other kinds of le of of uh, of uh, indications that are mentioned elsewhere in describing the the um, the diagnosis of leprosy? Talmud Loma. So for this reason, scripture says Kemar et Saraat or a Basar. It says here we go. Here it is. Kemar eight sarat or basar, right? Like the appearance of leprosy in the flesh or, or on the skin of the of of the flesh. So that's why the Torah says here to include right other indications of leprosy, right? So in other words, kemar e hatsarat. In other words, he's he's reinterpreting these words here or or spelling them out, like the appearance of leprosy, amur that is stated, the parshat or basar, in the section that is dealing with the, the skin of the flesh, which isn't talking about the head and the hair on top of the head. Adam, here is what it says, Adam kihie ba or basaro, an individual who has in the skin of his flesh Umahu amur bo, okay, and that which is uh, stated regarding it, shemitame the arba marot, that is is diagnosed as impure by means of four different indications, menadun veshte shavuot, and and he and again if the process began where the man in show, was indicate was uh, sorry showing these indications would go to see the priest and it was possible that uh, the priest thought that it might be that but he had to then go into isolation for a week and then he had to show it to the priest again and uh, it's possible that if it had not developed any further the priest would then have him uh, isolate for another week to see. And then if my recollection is correct, if it hadn't then developed any further, it still would be considered leprosy or tsarat, forgive me. And of course, if it had developed, then without any question. But of course, if it had started to uh, fade away, then he might be considered in a process of, of tahor. And he says, as opposed to the indication of tsarat that is stated bishkin, 
Peshkin is like a boil, or Michya, Mich, uh, Michya is a burn, Shehu Nidun B'Shavua Echad, which is uh, diagnosed in the course of one week, V'lo Kemarme Nitakim, and it is, this doesn't look like the indications, right, of a netek, something called a netek. This is, as I said, uh, I believe it's translated as a fret, and I'm not sure if we're talking about things that look like freckles or something like that. Shelma kom sa'ar, like the place of where the hair is. She'ein mitanin ba'ar ba'marot, which are not considered uh, uh, to be impure by means of four uh, indications. Se'et uh, betoldata, the se'et would be an eruption and its uh, derivatives. Baheret would be a bright spot, betoldata, and its derivatives, which have to do with the coloration. So apparently, let me think that in this case, all right, that we're simply saying these anetic might well be impure, but it, it has different ways of being diagnosed. That's that's the point that's being made here. Okay. So let's go on here, right? Uh, and the the priest should examine him, right? Should see him literally. And behold, the the eruption of the uh, of the nega of the affliction, levana adam demet is white and reddish, the karachto in the area towards the back of his head, or begabachto or in the front of his head, kemar et sarat or basar. Right, it looks just like the the sarat in the flesh. Right, okay, ish tsarua hu. He is considered to be a tsarua, meaning a having tsarat. Tamehu, he is impure. Tamei yitma enu hakohen, the priest should declare him impure, berosho, in his head. Berosho uh, nigo, uh, so his affliction is in his head, is on his head. Barosho, Rashi Barosho, on his head. Nego is his affliction. Ain li ela nitakim. So he says, normally all I could derive would be this affliction called a netek. Min ayin lerabot sha'ar ha'menugaim. He says, how do I know that in this particular uh, diagnosis we include other kinds of uh, uh, those who are afflicted by this, Talmud Lomar, for this reason, Scripture states, Tame nit amenu, right? He shall indeed de declare him imp a impure, the rabot et kulam, that is to include any other kinds of similar indications. Al kulam, regarding, regarding all of them, who Omer, he says, the gadav yiyu prumim. This he this is what happens once a person is in fact declared a leper that they have to basically uh, rumple his clothes. His clothes become disheveled. He needs to wear disheveled looking clothing, right, and uh, etc. The gomer. Going on. So now, now we are going to say this is what happens. The Hatsarua and a one who has Sarat, a Sherbo Hanega, right? Who who has been diagnosed with this particular affliction, the Gadav Yu Fumim, his clothing should be, as I said, uh basically disheveled. The Rosho Ye Parua. And this has to do with the hair on his head is just a mess. He has a permanent bad hair uh, situation. For al safam ya'ate, and apparently he needs to place something over his mouth, right over 
over the top of his mouth, the tame tame yikra, and he has to call out unclean, unclean. Right. So, Rashi, before I comment a little bit further on this, because this is, as I said, arcane and difficult. This is not easy stuff. So Rashi explains, Frumim Ruim means torn. Parua, it refers to the hair just as let to grow. His hair just grows. He never gets it. It gets a haircut. For al Safam Yate, and he has to place like some kind of covering over his mouth, right? Ka'avel, like one who's in mourning. Safam, right? So he says, what's the Safam? So he says, Sa'ar Asfatayim. We're talking about the hair over the lips, your mustache. And the French, of course, is Grinon, it looks like. And in Yiddish, it looks like Schnorbert. So Bert is a, a beard, right? Because of the relationship to the word uh, beard in English. So Schnorbert must mean to do that part of the mouth, the, the mustache, etc. Allah's. The Tame Tame Yikra, and he shall call out unclean, unclean. Mashmia, right? He has to uh, announce Shehu Tame that he is in a state of impurity by Yifrashumi Menu, so that people should uh, dissociate from him. They should stay away from him. And that's okay. So let me let me comment a little bit. So uh, as we've said in, in previous discussions about this, is that the rabbis had determined that this particular affliction was the consequences of bad mouthing. That that going so in other words, that the the what we do when we go around and speak disparagingly about other people is a terrible, terrible thing. And of course, it's something that uh, a lot of people engage in. Most of us wind up doing some kind of bad-mouthing or another in various situations. And bad-mouthing basically is done in secret. And what you're doing basically, of course, is you're making someone a leper in a way towards his friends or associates when you badmouth an individual. And because it's such a uh, common kind of thing, and it's seen as such a, uh, I think would it be venial, would be that the right term for this? You know, that it's not considered that big a deal, that the Torah is trying to come around, you know, again, the theme of doing what doesn't come naturally, uh, to try and emphasize how we have to stay away from that kind of behavior. And, and this awful this awful consequence, as we're reading about right now, is to reverse exactly that. In other words, you've secretly made someone else a leper, and God is saying, well, you're not going to be able to be secret about it. Your, your own spiritual condition is now going to be for public review. And and just as when you do this to another person, you kind of push them out of a community, right? You are going to have to go through that yourself. And that's the way you're going to make atonement for this. And there is certainly indication in the Torah itself for this. And the idea of us being very mindful and very concerned about speaking ill about other people. There was a, a very great rabbi uh, of the 18th century, I believe, who was, uh, I, I can't think of his real name right now, uh, but his, he was referred to as the Chofetz Chaim, because there's a verse in one of the Psalms that says, who is one who desires life? Chofetz Chaim is desiring life. And, and it says, guard your tongue from evil. So this is evil speech that we're talking about here. And this particular rabbi wrote many pieces. He absolutely devoted uh, his life to trying to make people aware of the evils of evil speech 
and that's why he was known as the Chofetz Chaim. He also actually uh, composed a work, uh, the Torah Tmima, which is a major halachic work uh, in terms of determining halacha for Ashkenazic Jews. You can't just use the Shulchan Aruch, which is considered to be, of course, the law book of Jewish law for Ashkenazic Jews, but um, he actually did a tremendous amount of research and wrote his his commentary and his discussion of this uh, a major, major work. You ask how someone is capable of putting out so much, so much work, uh, and it's called the the uh, Torah Tmima, and it, it is in print. And with this, I will stop today's lesson. Uh, and of course, if you have a... Uh, let me make sure if this is where we're up to. Yes. Okay, so we're onto this page. And that's where we'll continue next time we meet. Any comments? Any thoughts before I switch off the recording? Okay. All right. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>